Yes, good afternoon. My name is Eric Sanders from the Sanders Firm PC, and today I would like to talk about student loan debt. And we all know those who went to undergraduate or even graduate school, medical school, law school, that you're probably going to have a significant amount of debt. And I want to give you some warnings and some tidbits that what to be careful of. In particular, most of us will sign this contract and take a student loan and not even bother reading the form contract and look at the specific wording of it. The one warning I want to give you out of all of this, you may get people to try to convince you and say, hey, why don't you come over with me, sign on to my student loan, I have a low rate, and I could bring down your rate from example, let's say 8% to 2% or 1% or maybe 3%. That sounds good in theory, but in practice it creates a significant legal problem for both parties, or one or both parties. Let's say, for example, I have a loan and then I, another person have a loan, even if it's a spouse and they have a loan, and I decide, well, let's join our loans together to lower the rate. The problem is, normally, according to your loan contract, and you've got to look at it, the agreement, you'll see this, that your student loan dies upon your death. The problem is, once you sign on and join your debt with another person, that's waived. So, in other words, if you die or you become deceased or the other person becomes deceased, you then become responsible for the other person's loan. So, words to the wise. Despite what anyone tells you, take a good look at your loan contract agreement and the likelihood is that you should not be consolidating your student loan with anyone else because you lose probably one of the most significant protections, which is that your debt dies when you go deceased as opposed to having to survive your death and then you're responsible for a couple hundred thousand dollars in loans that you may not ever be able to repay. So let's use that as a word to why.